People are always asking me, how did I make a PFE? How did I make those different roster editors that I made that take games that are on consoles and pull the save information out of them and be able to manipulate them, tweak them and mod them and then throw them back into the game. I wanna do a series about how modding works and give you guys a behind the scenes view on the coding and some of the technical things that it takes to mod games so that if you want to do the same thing with a game that you're interested in, you can do that. We're going to go ahead and get started today with the first video in the series and this one's going to be talking to you about the binary hex and base 10 system. And I'm going to walk you through that in a tutorial and show you exactly how the numbers that are in the game saves, which most game saves are saved in what they call hex, which is a very efficient way to store your data, and how those values are constructed and give you a very, very dumbed down, simple, intuitive way of learning how that numbering system works so that you can apply it to your games. And even if you open the file and you change it on your own by hand, you can at least know what you're working with and I'm gonna share those secrets with you in this video now. All right, so now we're back at the computer and we're gonna talk about the base 10 model, which the base 10 is really the root of all of the math that's being done to store data in these game save files. If you look at a game save, let's go ahead and pull up the all pro football one real quick so it could show you an example of what you would see if you were to open these up. And you can open these in a hex editor uh, online. You can grab one. There's a free one called HXD. And there's also one that you can pay for, which I like better and I prefer, which is Hex Workshop. Okay, so when you open up one of these files, you're going to see a whole number of different numbers, characters, you know, letters, all sorts of weird symbols. And if you've ever tried to look at these and really understand what's going on here, you may have been able to, you know, maybe change a few values or, you know, maybe look at some names on here because on the right side, you can actually see the Unicode text strings and some of these number values here in hexadecimal actually look like characters, right? They look like actual text uh, strings. So you may find like a John Smith or something like that in here. The thing is, is that it's a lot deeper than that. And there's much more to understand to be able to really be dangerous and understand how you can manipulate these files and what, what they really consist of. And that's why we're doing this video. So let's go back to the whiteboard here and take a look at what we have. So we have base 10, decimal, binary, and hexadecimal, right? So what do those mean? Right? You might be thinking, okay, what does that really mean to me? Well, if you look at a conversion chart, and you look at decimal, binary, and hex, the first thing you're gonna look at is the three different types, right? So we have decimal, which is basically your normal number system. They go from zero to nine, and then each each column, obviously you can go to zero to nine, and you can get 999,999. You know, you can go as high as you want with decimals, right? And if you go to the right of the decimal, obviously you get, you know, one tenth, one hundredth, one thousand, thousandths, whatever. And that's pretty much base 10. Okay. Binary is more of your computer talk, right? You have ones and zeros, which is literally the equivalent of turning a light switch on and off. And in binary, you have eight different columns. And if you take all of the different combinations of ones and zeros, you can get all the way up to 255 per per set here. And then you have a hexadecimal, which we're gonna get into last, which is a whole nother flavor of this. This is the most efficient way, or one of the most efficient ways that you can store data. And that's why a lot of games use hexadecimal because it's a very efficient method to store data. If we go back to the whiteboard here, we're gonna start by looking at base 10. And you guys all really know what base 10 is. Base 10 is what you've been using your whole life, okay? Base 10 is very, very simple, okay? Base 10 is, let's just get a number, let's call it 3,457, right? So what does that mean? 
Well, we know that the seven is the ones place. If we're looking at base 10 and we look at decimals, the way that they work, the 50 is in your 10 place. The four is in the hundred place and the threes in the thousands. And if we had more, you'd be, you know, over here, you'd be in the 10,000 range, etc. right? So, but for now, we're not gonna look at anything beyond the four here. So let's get rid of these here. So if you take these numbers and you add them all up, well, what do you have? You have 3,000, right? Plus 400, plus 50, right? Plus seven. And if you add that all up, you get your 3,457, right? And these are all basically powers of 10. Okay, so if we take these numbers here and we translate to them to base 10, what you really have are exponential values of zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth, right? And the equivalent of these are the numbers below. This is just a more efficient way to write it. And this is what we call our base 10. So you have 10 different numbers, zero through nine, and those numbers represent each column in here, right? So that's how base 10 is built. So you may be asking me, okay, what does that mean when it comes to game saves? Well, base 10 translates over to binary. And if we go back to the chart here, we can look and see that binary is just a set of numbers. It's ones and zeros, right? So instead of a base 10, which goes from zero through nine, right? This actually goes from zero just to one. So we call it base two. Okay, so if we go back to the whiteboard here, then you can see that instead of going zero all the way through nine, which is 10 digits, all we're gonna do now is go from zero to one, which is a total of two digits. Okay, so instead of 10 to the third power, 10 to the second power, 10 to the first, et cetera, we're gonna do it by twos. So it's gonna look something like this, right? And we're gonna be able to do binary now using the base two uh, numbering system. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out. And let's go ahead and write numbers in. So now with base two, we're gonna, let's just write one of these here, one of these uh, binary values, 1101, okay? And 1101 is the equivalent of, let's just first draw out our base two system, okay? And we know this is gonna equal one, this is gonna equal two, this is gonna equal four, and two times two is four, four times two is eight, okay? So what you do here is the same thing you did before. You do one times basically two to the third power, which is eight, and that's gonna give you a value of eight. One times four is four. Zero times two and one times one is one, right? So if you take these values here and you add them all up, you're going to get eight plus four is 12 and 12 plus one is 13, right? So if we go back then you can see that the 1101 is the equivalent of number 13, right? It's D, number 13. So decimal 13, binary 1101. Now, if we wanted to do another set of numbers, we can go ahead and do that as well. But the secret here is that you actually have, now you have the power to add these all up and you can do whatever numbers you want, right? If you want to do 0, 1, one, one. Well, now you know that that equals one, two, and four, and obviously zero here, because anything times zero is always gonna be zero, right? So we do this, it's six and seven, right? So now if we go back and we look at the sheet again, we know that zero, one, one, one is the equivalent of seven. So now you have your base two, and you understand how base two is calculated. Now, we're gonna look now at hexadecimal and how this translates. So now hexadecimal takes you to 
a whole new level of base. Now hexadecimal is base 16. Okay. So instead of going zero through nine, which is 10 numbers or zero through one, which is two, right? We're going to go zero through 15, which is a total of 16 numbers, right? You start at zero. So you count zero, you go all the way to 15, you have 16 numbers. So that's going to be your base 16. And the way that it works is if you think about it, once you get to nine, where do you go? You can't go anywhere. Now, the cool thing about hexadecimals, they went from numbers and they started to use letters, right? So A is going to be 10, right? And B is going to be 11 and C is going to be 12 and D is going to be 13 and E is going to be 14 and F is going to be 15, right? So that's your, that's the way. And then it resets back down to zero. Okay. So you have zero now to 15. So if we clear all this, all this out and we look at the base 16, we now know that 16 third power, 16 second power, 16 first power, 16 zero power, right? So we know that these numbers are going to be 4096 and 256, 16 and 1, okay? So if we wanted to take an example here, so in this example, we have 08FD. We go 0BFD, right? And we know that, that, that those numbers are, um, and I could put a zero like that so you know it's a zero. We know that those numbers are actually going to be representative of real numbers, right? So we're going to do the math here, but this time we're going to do it on the calculator because we don't have all of the, um, I'm not going to do the math in my head, right? But we know that B equals from before, we know B equals 11. We know F equals 15. And we know that D equals 13, right? So if we do, if we get a calculator, and I'm going to pull one up now so you can see, if we get a calculator here and we take a look at these, these numbers, we know that zero times 4,096 is zero. Okay. So we already know off the, off the bat that this one's going to equal zero, right? Now what we got to do here is take 11 times 256. Okay. So if we do 11 times 256, we get that number. And then we got to do 15 times 16. And then we got to do 13 times one, right? And the number we get is 3069. Okay. So if we bring that up here, let's just go ahead and write that. So we have it 3069. Okay. And we'll get rid of the zero part here. So that's the number that we should be getting. Now we go back to the calculator and we do the uh, programmer calculator. We do hex. If I type in the same values you see up here, if I type in a zero, a B and F and D. Well, the total is three zero six nine. So we got it right. And if we look going back to the actual files here, if we look at some of these numbers, you're going to see that if you look here, the OBFD, if you're looking at your uh, hex program, it's going to show you the 16 base or base 16 value, which is 3069. And then you can continue to add more and more values. You can do 32, you can do 64, but really now that you have the, the basics, you could do the 32 if you wanted to because you know how to do 32 base. You know how to do any base. You could do 64 base if you wanted to and so on and so forth, right? And we also know with hexadecimal, you know that it goes from zero all the way down to 15, but that really is zero down to F, right? So you go nine, A, B, C, D, E, and F right? So we know how to do all of that now. So I'm going to show you a cool little uh, example of how this is all used for something that we always look at, which is RGB, right? 
We have RGB colors, and RGB colors can go from 0 to 255, for those of you who have ever used them before, right? And if you look at RGB colors, you know that, you know, if you want white, white is FF, FF, and FF. And if you look at, if you break it down into the hexadecimal values, okay, you know that you're going to get um, numbers here. We're going to go ahead and figure that out ourselves to do another example here. And let's go ahead and draw these out again. So we have them, right? And now we have, we basically have, um, we're only using these two here, right? And we know that FF is equal to 15 and 15, right? So 15 times 16, if we take a, our calculator out again, and we go back to scientific, we know that 15 times 16 is 240, right? And 240, so 15 times um, one is 15, so 240 plus 15 equals 255, right? And if we go back to our programmer thing here and we type in FFFF, well, the answer is 255, right? So we basically know that if you look at the, if you look at an RGB white, we know that white is going to be 255, 255, and 255. All right, so we got it. Hopefully we got it. I don't know. I think I got it. I know it's confusing. You can go back and watch the video again. But now you know the basics of how the data structures work inside of files like the All Pro Football rosters or ESPN 2K5 or NFL Fever or Backbreaker. Any type of game that saves on a console typically has uh, hex type of formats like the ones I just showed you here. So now you have at least a little bit more information than you did before on what it takes. I know when I got started originally, there was nothing on the internet that I could find that showed me how to decrypt and read these games. So this is tutorial number one. We're gonna be doing a lot more. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how this stuff works and really give you the ammo that you're gonna to need to do some of this stuff yourself so we can get more creations and more modding and get into your games and, you know, do what you got to do.